Hey everyone, Eggman here with a, another video, and today we have a top 16 breakdown for the Core TCG Ultimate Cup that happened this past weekend. And real quick before we get started, I wasn't originally going to do the breakdown for this event, just because Ultimate Cups are kind of in a weird spot. They're just such quick formats, and we also know that we're getting like the regular format back starting next year. So I didn't have this on my original plan to cover, but I did a live stream today for Digimon, which is honestly a lot of fun. I should be, you know, doing more in the next couple weeks too and probably adding it to my regular rotation but it's a lot of fun and it's also again re-uploaded here on youtube if you want to check it out as a channel member uh but it was, it was a good time and i had a lot of people uh asking in chat if i was going to cover this event if the deck lists were going to be available so uh, i ended up doing it it took a couple hours two to three hours to do this and then record it as well so if you guys appreciate this video please make sure to hit that like and subscribe it would mean a lot to me because uh, again i do I, I had to spend a lot of time in the, on a on a thursday night that are sorry on a wednesday night that i wasn't expecting to uh to get this and uh it just it just took a lot of time so there it is there also shout outs to ashley and veggie from the squirtlemon squad youtube channel they were able to come over here uh earlier today and that's they were who i was playing on my live stream so make sure to send a subscribe their way they're just a little bit under 100 and they're going to be doing a giveaway once they get to 100 so highly recommend doing that but all of that aside we do have this top 16 here for you guys today and this was again this last weekend 174 players only five rounds of swiss due to a lot of people having that 401 record just kind of ending the tournament since we did have a you know one definitive 5-0 also fun fact like we had wing wow they played against matt vang in the at table one at the end of round five and matt fell all the way down to ninth place so shout outs to matt uh, like that was that's rough i'm sorry that happened to you like being at table one and then just like one out of top eight is just a rough go but with so many ties it's just such a, a weird format like thing for a, for a tournament to do so uh and then also we did have the ultimate cup uh december wolf set so essentially it's just a block format for uh like reset or the the reprint booster onward uh those are the cards that are available to us some you know additional promos and stuff too but that's kind of the the idea of it so it's it's a pretty unique format for what it is it's kind of the closest thing that we have to rotation in this card game and i think that's really cool for you know bringing things into this game and uh and just getting some interesting decks which means that we still had yellow vaccine doing very well with five finishes uh we had four d brigades two war grays one of blue fish which is the first place list which i'm excited to go over a gammon a lugamon an ukumon rush i think that's the best thing i can call it you guys can decide when we look at it and an Imperdramon. so uh, honestly pretty diverse for what this is it's again a, a bit of an interesting format and it's a short-lived format so i don't think it's something that can be like you know explored a lot but i do like the idea of these like tiny little like like restricted card uh pool formats in this game uh but i don't think it's something that is going to get like a long-term kind of thing but it's what it is so i'm, I'm happy to go over this and we're going to go over our first place list which is ming uh blue fish build and so it's just using kind of like the the archetype it's kind of like a source control kind of thing uh it revolves around this gamamon which is just honestly like such a strong card uh with which is, lets you like recycle itself it says you know throw your main phase trash one digivolution card from one of your opponent's digimon then this digimon can't be blocked for the turn and then opponent's turn when this digimon would be deleted you can play a gamamon from the digimon's uh sources without paying the cost so you get to recycle it for free and then you get to do the the start of main phase effect and it also has like this bukamon is such a good digi egg like you're you're gonna see this quite a bit it has this your turn while your opponent has no digimon with equal or more digivolution cards uh this gains jamming so being able to just get jamming on a lot of your guys for pretty much free like you do need like some sort of source control but if you have four sources and they have three just inherently like jamming on on some of your guys is really good but we have these lines that get a lot of sources away uh including like the the gecko mon into the, the shogu gecko mon this being able to not be KO'd by battle essentially for a turn means you're in a good spot and then the plesio mon which lets you trash things and essentially attack twice too so all of this uh goes very well we have like a vmon which also has jamming which i don't i mean you don't need it as much but it's helpful we have like the Vidramon, which lets you also attack twice, which if you have jamming, attacking twice for, you know, a level four is pretty cheap for you. And uh, some ways to like wave reliability to get the restand and the marching fishes, which essentially is uh, like a way to freeze a lot of things. So it looks like a really clean deck. I think it does do very well. It takes advantage of the Zudamon as well. And congratulations to Minghao for their first place finish there. 
Next up, we have Isaiah's with their second place yellow vaccine. And we did have four of, or sorry, three yellow vaccines in, in, in a 401 record. So Isaiah's, we have Benjamin Moore as well as Devin. I'm just going over uh, Isaiah's build for this one. They all looked pretty similar, which I mean is not too surprising with the like the limited card pool that we have. And we know what the, the good cards are, like the Panamon and the Andromon and the Andromon uh, X. I'm sorry, Ajumon Ace, uh, being able to use these for your recovery, and then the Seraphimon and a copy of Goldramon at the top. There also is an ad of the Gautamon, which is just another like vaccine uh, card, but being able to use this for like having uh, like an on play to recover is really great. You're not going to have any purple cards out for the blocker part, but uh, just having like another card for like a recovery if needed, I think is strong enough. So there is that there. Uh, Emissary of Hope is a really great card. It's going to be doing very good, I think, for the next little bit. And then your TKs and, and just everything else. So it's a pretty, I think, uh, understood archetype at this point here in North America. It's a, it's a newer one. It's one of my favorites now that I've been able to play it a little bit more. And I don't think it's really going anywhere. I think it's going to be in a good spot for uh, this meta for the next little bit. So this is Isaiah's list. Congratulations for their second place there with Yellow Vaccine. Next up, we have James uh, Lichi Hernez with the Gammon. And I'm happy that Gammon got a top in this event. It kind of just had a, a rough go here in North America when we got the delay of the reprint booster, which just meant like this deck did, you know, some things in Japan since it came uh, came out beforehand and then like the fact that when when this when these cards came out they were pretty much already kind of rotated out in, in a little bit so being able to have this deck uh, at a power that it can compete in i think is a, a really cool spot uh, we do have pretty much like the the two lines we have like the gamma the the purple line and the red line being able to go into serious mon uh, as also the uh, arc, uh, arc i can never say this arc to mon uh, and ending on the proximon if you need to and having a level seven in this format is kind of good because there's not as many available to a lot of decks right now and a lot of them aren't really open-ended so being able to have like your your plays into this is very good we have access to the offense training and red mem boost and then only one uh version of hero which is a little bit rough for for this but uh, it does help out the deck too so uh like being able to go into cannon weiss and get all the effects on it we have like the the blitz effect from with this one we have the raid effect from the battle we have the jamming which is great uh, sorry the evade we have the evade and then also uh, just, just being able to have like these stacks that like be like recycle your additional abilities uh, helps out the deck a lot. So, uh, and also like the, the inheritable on this one being able to just trash security with if you use the proximon effect is uh, pretty good too. So, that is the build here. Congratulations to Jame for their third place finish. The next up we have Enrique with the D Brigade, and D Brigade was honestly pretty popular. It was the second most popular in this top sixteen, and uh, you know obviously we don't have as many commander mons of you know in this format just because of the card restrictions but having two different kinds as i think of enough so we have the, the new commander mon which is very strong and the bt5 one which has blocker we are able to run the chumon and also the doromon which helps us out too uh and then the rest of the line like the rest of the line in itself from this set is good enough i think to, to have its own legs high commander mon being able to play additional cards off your the top of your deck i also have like the the vade mon which obviously you don't have as much choices in this format specifically but i do think it's a great card for disruption it is a little bit rng but being able to uh you know digivolve and also like it worst case if it doesn't digivolve you get to kind of see what cards your opponent can draw and mess them up either give them the cards that they don't need or bottom deck them if you know that they need the cards so i think that's strong and uh, can kind of mess up your opponent uh, the bigger uh, brigade Dramon is a an okay spot. Like we don't have like a lot of removal outside of like the DCD bomb or the ultimate flare, but you don't need that as much when you're able to just pop out as many bodies. Uh, I honestly also like this card a lot. I, I think it's been gaining popularity for a lot of people. Just a simple D digivolve and then just being able to clear off like a body or two is uh this sets off uh, like a lot of decks too. So I like that idea for the deck. Uh, other than that, there's not a lot of other cards we can add to this one, but congratulations to Enrique for their fifth place finish there. Next up, we have Christopher with their sixth place Lugamon. And I think a lot of people thought that Lugamon and also probably uh, War Grey were in a really good spot into this format. And I still think that's true uh, because you get generally most of the cards for for these decks you don't have like some of the uh i don't think you have gazimon this form i could be wrong for that but i know you don't have the black gotamon the black yellow one we do have like this uh these unver version of it uh which lets you you know play from your security and on play you can return a digimon for your opponent's trash to the bottom of their deck to draw one so drawing on security and like like maybe potentially you know ruining some other decks and their performances not not every card uses stuff in the trash but some decks still do that uh and then like fenrir is still like a really great card if you're able to go off with it 
We do have a couple copies of the Metal Garurumon, which I don't think is as good uh, for for the deck, but it is kind of just okay for what this format is. And then some Purple Memories boost your Wisdom Training and the rest of it. So we're also running like the, the Louis and Ukamon package, uh, which is when, if you have room, which I think, again, a lot of decks will have room for this, they're like not the worst cards to to just add. Just They're very uh, generic and, and help you out there too. So it also means you can get away with not running a lot of these uh, rookies when you don't really have uh, a lot of room for them. So that is the build there. Congratulations to Christopher for their sixth place finish. And next up, we have Sean with their eighth place War Gray. And again, I think a lot of people did think this was going to be one of the the better decks in this format, and we're, we'll see if it does get uh, you know a couple additional Ws from there. But like this this BT14 War Gray is in a good spot, and the uh, the War Gray from BT12. I think both of these are pretty strong for what they are. Being able to like get the raid effect and get the removal is just really really good for you. Uh, we do have like the alternative line with like the uh, the War Gray uh, Ace card if you want to, and just uh, like the Metal Gray on here being able to have blocker or just inherited a security attack plus one, including the starter deck one security attack plus one, you can get some really big uh, additional removal from there. Like being able to just do a lot of checks with these and then being able to just go into Blitz Omni. It's it's just, it sounds really good and can get some additional uh, checks. We also have Ty from BT1 and also the BT14 one. So uh, nothing too crazy. Like there's just so many Agamons, Greymons that even with such a restricted card pool at this point, it's pretty easy for this to still have its lines to go up for uh, and also take advantage of the new Metal Greymon from uh, BT14 as well. So not much more to say from that. Just congratulations to Sean for their eighth place finish. The next up we have Justin with this. I'm calling it like Ukomon Rush. I know it's a little bit more of like the Vmon Rush uh, and kind of like it. It looks kind of like the like a more aggressive of like the first place list, which is kind of more like the source control. But um, I'm just calling it Ukomon Rush. You can call it whatever you want for for this format. But you know, we do have like a good amount of Vmons, these free cards to take advantage of this Davis Tamer, uh, which is you know one of the new promo ones, which is really nice. Start your main phase, you face something with free you get a memory on play you also get to play vmon without paying the cost or evolve into x vmon uh, without paying its cost so being able to get like passive one extra memory every turn is is generally a good spot for you uh, and helps you with the rest of your your lines but yeah obviously this one doesn't go as tall our biggest card is the zudamon which technically we can still hard play for four and get that disruption but I also think that it's going to be pretty common for us to end our turn on a level four, either it be Vidramon with the help of Bukamon keeping it alive, or, or honestly just anything else. And then if it survives, we can like counter into Zudamon still and get that advantage for you. So other than that, I think it's, it's pretty straightforward, a, a very like aggressive deck and taking advantage of like the limited format, like the recyclability of Gamamon being able to like Digivolve into a Vidramon and play it out again. And, and just the fact that this can prevent your opponent from even having blockers uh, is such a good card. So this is Justin's list. Congratulations to their finish there. And then to wrap it up, we have Andrew with their 14th place in Pyrodramon, which I just sneak in on in here. And I honestly like in Pyrodramon a lot. And we do have a couple new cards for the deck in general, including like this Imperial on dragon mode ace card which i think is really cool uh we don't have uh, like a lot of level sixes for this but having a hand counter to there where in a deck that likes to end on a five drop pyodramon anyways it usually you go really aggressive and then it's not too difficult to like play additional like blue memboos mental training or just like a tamer to end the turn uh and then if they like you can counter into this which gets a lot of value for you or even just like hard playing it for seven and uh, you can get some fighter mode so i really do like this this dragon mode card i think it's a really good card and it helps out the deck a lot uh we also have the the old pyodramon from bt12 we have the new vmon promo as well so once per turn you can digivolve into free you get to reduce it by one and you get a, a draw when attacking which is not once per turn so it's like the stingmon it just means you get a lot of card draw with this guy and uh it's just uh, i think the deck's in a, a good spot and i think andrew made a good call for for playing this guy too so uh eggs are a three two split between demi v and bukamon and i can understand that since you do get uh the jamming for free off of the x v mon from this deck but sometimes you do need like another just additional bukamon to to get there i mean just being able to put it underneath a rookie and have a rookie swing be like have jamming like that is is pretty invaluable so i think that's important other than that, I don't have much more to say. Congratulations to Andrew for their finish there. And that's going to be it for this uh, event breakdown. Again, if you guys made it this far, uh, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, I might do the other Ultimate Cups if this one takes off. If this one doesn't do well, I'll probably be the only Ultimate Cup we cover for, for this month. But I'll definitely make sure to cover some more BT14 events, including the Pasadena Regional that we have a week from this upcoming Saturday on December 16th and, uh, and just kind of everything else. So that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys for, uh, for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.